what if we were given the side lengths of a right angle triangle and we were asked to find out the actual angles inside that right angle triangle? Well, that's when these inverse functions come into play. Remember from SOHCAHTOA, and let's focus in on the sine function, that sine of an angle, A, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And let's say that we had a right angle triangle, and down here is angle A, and let's say that we knew that the hypotenuse was 10, and this side over here was 5.229. Because we're going to be using trig ratios, we should always label our triangle. And this is going to be the hypotenuse. This is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent. So if we were actually going to try to calculate what angle A is, we would use sine because we're using opposite and hypotenuse and we don't really care what adjacent is and we're not given adjacent. So we would write down sine of angle A equals opposite over hypotenuse. You always start with your formula. I know it's a little bit extra writing, but you should do it. Sine of angle A is going to equal, now the opposite is 5.229 and the hypotenuse is 10. If we get our calculators out, you're going to see that that is equal to 0 0.5229, which is the same as our example over here. Because I know that the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse equals 0 0.5229, I can use my trig ratios to calculate what the measure of angle A is. Let's rewrite this. We have sine of angle A equals 0 0.5229. Now we want to find out what A is. We don't want to find out what sine of A is. So somehow we have to effectively move this over here. Okay, and that's not really the mathematical term, but what happens when we move the sine away from an angle? It turns into sine inverse. And over here, we still have to write in our ratio, 0 0.5229. I hope you can see that. I don't know if that went off the screen. And now, we just have to figure out how do we enter this in to our calculator to calculate the measure of angle A. Well, let's pull our calculator up and let me show you. If we want to type this in, again, the Windows calculator is a backwards calculator, so I have to start by typing in the ratio, which is going to be 0. 5229. Now I'm going to go into my trigonometry drop down, and you can see that I don't have sine inverse here. I have sine, cosine, and tangent, and I have a few other ones down here. But if I want to get to the inverse functions, I have to click on the second button. And when I do that, now I do see sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. All I have to do is press the sine inverse button, and as long as I am in degree mode, I now know the measure of angle A is 31.5269 and so on. When we're writing down angles, you don't have to go to four decimal places, but you should go to two decimal places. The measure of angle A is going to be 31.5 degrees. And that's how we can use our inverse trig functions when given two side lengths in a right angle triangle to calculate the angles inside of a right angle triangle. Let's go through the next couple examples here and see how to key these in on our calculator. Our next one, we're taking a look at tan of angle A in a different triangle, is going to equal 4.3315. So we start off by typing in our ratio, and then we click on the trigonometry drop-down, and we want the tan inverse. So we're going to go to second function, and then tan. And we're going to see that that angle is going to be 77 degrees. So let's just write down our steps first. First, we're going to move the tan over to this side. And I know moving it is not really the correct term, but effectively what we're going to end up getting is angle A is going to equal tan inverse of whatever the ratio was. So in this case, the ratio was 3315, so 4.3315. And remember that from SOHCAHTOA, tan of an angle, in this case A, is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that means the length of the opposite side over the length of the adjacent side is going to be equal to the tangent of angle A. We figured out already that angle A is going to be 77.0 degrees. Let's take a look at this one here. So we're going to rewrite this. We're going to move the sine over 
and it becomes sine inverse on the other side of the equation. So sine inverse of 0 0.2419. And because we're using a Windows calculator, we have to key in the ratio first. So it's 0.2419. Click on our trig dropdown, second function, and then sine. And we end up getting 13.998. When we round this, this is going to be 14 degrees. So going back, we know now know that angle A is going to equal 14 degrees. Go ahead and use your calculator and depending on whether or not you have a backward calculator or a forward calculator, make sure that you type things in and I will come back with the answers. Good luck. All right, how did you do? I got the cosine of angle A when it's equal to 0 0.7071. Angle A is going to be 39.6 degrees. Cosine of angle A when the ratio is 0 0.4226. Angle A is going to be 65 degrees. When the cosine of A is equal to 0.5, A is going to be 60 degrees. When we have a tangent of 0 0.0875, angle A is going to be 5 degrees. And when we have a sine of angle A equaling 0 0.8820, angle A is going to be 61.9.